Right, so you've watched my play. That could have been bad. <laughs> Never catch a falling plane blade. That's one of the um, stupidest things you can do. I'm getting sidetracked. You've watched my video on getting a stupidly sharp plane blade, but now you're like, Matt, how do I get it into the body of a plane? Well, that is what I'm going to show you how to do in this video and take those silky smooth shavings off the top of timber because if you can't do that, you're missing out on one of woodworking's finest gifts. So, let's get going. Okay, so I've broken this plane down into its component parts, so this is exactly what it looks like after you've finished sharpening. So let's get you in close and see what we're looking at here. Okay, so this video is gonna be very quick. There's not a lot to it, but those of you who are struggling to do this, this should enlighten you. So firstly, in this plane here, we've got what's called a frog, and obviously that is what the blade sits on. That's bed at 45 degrees to the sole of the plane, and that's the standard angle that most bench planes adhere to. We've got the blade, we've got the chip breaker, and this is the cap iron or lever cap, depending on where you're from or who taught you, basically. So a lot of people get the plane blade and the chip breaker mixed up here, especially on Ly Nielsen ones, because they almost look exactly the same, especially to a beginner. Usually the easiest way to tell them apart is literally the size difference between the two. The chip breaker is usually the smaller one. It's a very common mistake to make, and I've even seen some people sharpen the edge of their chip breaker before. So yeah, just double check, you do actually know which components you've got in your hand first. So to get the chip breaker onto the blade, you have got a screw here. Now this is removable, but I actually keep that engaged in there so I don't have the risk of accidentally dropping it and losing it. So that is poking out about five millimeters from the blade. Now to get this blade attached to the chip breaker, obviously this edge here is extremely sharp. So the last thing you want to do is whack it with your chip breaker and blunt all of your hard work. But a lot of people do this. They just see the chip breaker is meant to go on like that and they just drop it on like that, slide it back, whack their edge. So the way to do this, make sure that your blade is bevel down. Another way of remembering it is they're not going to put the logo underneath the blade, they're gonna have it on show. So we've got a logo on top here. So bevel down on the blade, bevel up on the chip breaker. So you're essentially creating a knife point with the two. And to attach them, what I'm gonna do, that screw there is going to drop through the hole on the plane blade at 90 degrees. I'm gonna slide it back like that, turn it round, and then move it forward like that. So once again, that screw is poking up from the surface, so I'm able to get the blade underneath it like that. So I'm going to flip it over, screw is underneath, 90 degrees into that hole, slide it back, round, and then forward. Okay, so now you've got chip breaker on top, blade underneath, and you've got the bevel of the chip breaker on top, and the bevel of the blade underneath like that. So obviously that screw is loose in there still, so we need to lock that down, but the question that arises now is where do you lock that chip breaker down? Well, this distance varies from plane to plane, and that variation is caused by the fit between the chip breaker and the blade. On a Ly Nielsen one like this, that fit is very precise, so I can afford to get this chip breaker right up to the edge of the blade, and literally get that within a millimeter to half a millimeter from the edge. And the closer you get that, that will give you a nice clean finish. However, if you have a cheaper one, the chip breaker here has like an arch on it and that's where it mates with the blade. Usually the fit with those isn't as good. So if you put that chip breaker right up close to the edge, the shaving actually gets caught between the chip breaker and the blade and it just clogs up the entire mouth. And the only way to get rid of it is to take the blade back out, wipe it all off the chip breaker and the blade and then pop it all back together. So if the mouth of your plane keeps getting clogged up, that is why your chip breaker is probably a little bit too close to the edge of the blade and the fit between the two is not very precise. So like I said, Lee Nelson, I'm gonna get that right up to the edge, to within a millimeter. I'm gonna get my plane screwdriver here. I'm just gonna lock that down. I'm gonna do that very firmly. There we go, that's all locked in place. So this is another common mistake a lot of people make. They put it in like this because they see the screw at the top and you think, logically, that screw looks like it should go on top, but in fact, it actually hides underneath and it falls into this recess right here. Here. So as you can see, I'm now lifting the plane up to 45 degrees. Saves trying to put the blade in like that and accidentally drop it. If you lift it up so this surface is level, then it'll be much easier for you. So I'm gonna carefully pop that in there. Now this screw here is gonna go through the hole in the blade, obviously. So I'm gonna pop that in, careful not to ding the edge. There you go, that's through there. Now it looks like it's in, but it's actually not. You have gotta sometimes move it back and forward a bit until the lateral adjuster here locates on the blade. And there we go, now that's moving side to side in there. I'm going to pop that down now, just wipe the blade out so I don't smash it into my workbench. And there we go. Lock it all in place. So this 
that's the sound you want, a nice um, snap when it goes down. What you don't want to be doing every time you take out a blade to sharpen is loosening this screw here. No point to it. This is your quick release here, all done on that. Sometimes it's a screw thread here as well, but you still won't need to adjust this. It's all done up here. So if I wanted to make that snap tighter, I can tighten this down a bit. There we go, that's tighter. However, that has made all of these adjustments under here a lot tighter as well. So it's all about finding the fit for you and then leaving it like that. So a little bit less than that for me. There we go. So now all of my adjustments under here have a nice bite to them, but they're not slack in there. So it's all done with loosening or tightening that screw there. The next thing to sort out is the blade projection out the bottom of the plane to get yourself a nice even cut. Now I'm gonna come around to your side for this. Okay, so looking at the plane from the side, I'm gonna flip it over like this, and we're gonna sight it from the toe to the heel of it. So I'm gonna bring that in close, and then we can see the mouth all along here. It's easier if you have a white background for this, but this workbench is going to work very nicely. So underneath the plane blade, there is what's called the thrust wheel. And if I turn that clockwise, look what happens. See that shadow that's appearing? That is the blade poking out the bottom of the plane. But what you may notice is that it is uneven. It's high this side, it's low that side. How do we sort that? Well, you do that with the lateral adjuster, which is also below the blade, but just above the thrust wheel. Pushing that towards the high side of the blade is going to level it out. So you see now, it's relatively even. And what I'm gonna do is bring this blade in. So I'm gonna turn the wheel anti-clockwise now. And as I bring it in, any of those indiscrepancies between the height, so you see now it looked even earlier, now it's looking higher on the left-hand side than it is on the right. I'm gonna push it towards the high side, get it even, keep bringing it in. Now it's looking a little bit high on the right side again, ever so slightly. And this is what I mean, the more you bring it in, the more those indiscrepancies are gonna show up because it's getting closer to the sole of the plane. So we're gonna keep going. We're gonna to watch to see when both sides disappear into the body at the same time. If you watch my sharpening video, you will know that I put a camber on these blades. So watching the middle disappear is somewhat accurate, but watching the edges disappear is much more accurate. So where are we at there? Let's push it a little bit to the left, a bit more, because that looks to be a tad higher. There we go. Keep winding it in. There we go. So you see, putting a camber on a blade, it's so minuscule, you're hardly even gonna see that curvature by eye, let alone in the piece of material that you're playing afterwards. So I'm gonna keep bringing that in, and both sides, from what I can see looking through the camera lens anyway, have disappeared at exactly the same time into the body of the plane. So with both corners now even in the plane, I'm gonna bring that all the way back so that none of the blade is poking out at the bottom of the plane. Now we've been winding this thrust wheel anti-clockwise and now we have what is called backlash. So if I start turning this clockwise now, within that screw thread, there is some slack in the component that pushes the blade in and out. That is called backlash we want to get rid of that. So if we didn't get rid of that backlash and had the wheel engaged in the anti-clockwise direction, what would happen is as we push that plane forward into a bit of wood, it's gonna shunt the blade back. And the reason for that is because the blade is not supported by the component that this wheel moves. Very difficult to explain, but having a mess around with your plane, you will feel this backlash. So like I say, it was in the anti-clockwise direction. If I turn it clockwise, it's a bit loose, and then I feel the thread engaged. Now that blade is supported from behind, and if I was to take a shaving, it wouldn't shunt back. And this is the reason why we brought that blade all the way back into the plane, because now we can start advancing it out and we know that it is square in the body of the plane. So now the thrust wheel is in the advanced position, so it's locked in clockwise. And now what I can do is bring that to my timber and start pushing forward. Now obviously we winded this blade all the way back in, so it's not cutting. What we can do is, as we're pushing, I'm going to keep winding that thumb wheel clockwise until we start taking a shaving. There we go. That's starting to dig in now. There we go. Taking a lovely smooth shaving along there. Very fine, but that is what's gonna give you a really nice clean cut. And the camber on the blade means that if I was to center my plane on the right-hand side of the bit of timber here and try and take a shaving, it's not gonna do anything. Similarly, if I put it on the left-hand side of the wood, it's not gonna cut. The curve in the blade is only allowing me to cut if I center it on the material like that. 
And this is very useful. Say, for example, you were trying to square the edge of this timber and this right hand side here was high. Instead of just trying to balance the plane on here and try and take off the shaving, what some people would do would tell you to change your lateral adjuster so that the blade is slightly skewed and then it will take a heavier shaving on the right hand side than the left hand side. But then in doing so, you would have to do exactly what we just did with flipping it upside down, bring it all the way out, get it square in there, bring it back, bring it back out in order to get it square in there again. So for that reason, I don't mess around with the lateral adjuster at all, other than when I'm first putting the blade in there after sharpening. The camber means that I can center the plane on this right-hand side of the material here, and that is only taking material off the right-hand side of this edge of wood. So once I've got that all nice and square, I can center the plane on there, push it through, and then that edge is nice and square. So there we go, really not that difficult. Get everything assembled in there, bring the blade all the way out, check it from underneath, get it square in there, bring it all the way back in so it's not gonna be cutting anything at all. And then as you're planing along a long length of timber and just make minuscule turns at a time. Don't think that you need to turn that wheel half a turn between each adjustment. The turns that you need to be making are a lot smaller than what you think. So just play around with it and eventually you will be taking off wispy shavings like that. If your eyesight isn't great and you're struggling to look down the sole of the plane to check if the blade is square, get yourself a little scrap of timber and just run that along the blade. Like I say, if you put a camber in there, it will take nothing off the edges, but then it will gradually take off more as you work your way to the middle. And that will give you a good indication of how square your blade is in the plane. So there we go, nice and simple. Have fun making those lovely shavings. See you in the next video.